So not only is today the start of 20 Star Special League RTA, but today is also the first time that we're actually able to see the second Awakened Vagabonds and Mystic Witches in RTA. Fun fact, nobody's using the water or the fire ones. I'm not really surprised from the water one, but I am a little bit surprised that nobody's using the fire one, at least yet, because I mean, it is, like I said, the first day of 20 Star Special League RTA. So we'll see over the course of the rest of the season what kind of cons people are using with the fire one. I was actually a little bit surprised that so many people were using the water one and, and not the no, not not that not the water one. Uh the wind one. And then I realized he is a natural two star. Yeah, you know, it took me a second to realize that I'm like, oh wait, he's a natural two star. So of course those have more values. The more two stars you bring in, the more LD5s you can bring in the comp, as we see here. Pick a bunch of two stars as they picked two uh, two two stars so they could bring their uh, their LD fives in here. So it looks like they weren't uh, going to finish off the Lauren because she was just going to die from the dots. So they wanted to just go for the Riley uh, after that. But actually, I think that if we compare, we did compare uh, Royd, the Wind Vagabond, to Lauren in a previous video where I was discussing the uh, the Vagabonds. As far as taking like turn one and opening. Lauren, of course, has more value because she strips, but over the long game, uh, Royd, the Wind Vagabond, actually has damage. Lauren, she's an attacker, but she doesn't really have any damage, so he's just, for the long game, a better version of her since he does more bruiser damage. Let's take a look at some more comps. I'm trying to find matches that have multiple of the new two-way units in the same match. This way, we can see a little bit more per match than we would otherwise if it's just a bunch of... I was going to say, if it's just a bunch of LD5s and then just one, I mean, it kind of, all the matches we're seeing so far are just a bunch of LD5s and then some new two-way units, because the last one had two, this one had one. The reason that they're picking these LD Vagabonds uh, is, or the, the Vagabonds in general, is just to, just to get more LD5s into the match. That's really all it is. I mean, there's only one LD5 in this match, but basically that's what it is. Okay, so let's see if they're able to, I'm, I'm kind of curious. I think the bru I think the bruiser team wins. They're kind of both. <laughs> they're kind of. Wait, <laughs> which bruiser? They're both bruiser teams. I think the team closest to us is going to win this one. I think they just have a little bit more juice, a little bit more efficiency, especially this Daphnis now. He's just in a really bad spot. So, yep. Oh, they didn't even. They just gave up at that point. So here's the strategy. Again, it's it's they're just bringing the two stars. They got the first picks for two stars on both sides, just so that they could bring all the LD5s at the very end. Bans out the Gianna. The other player lets both LD5s do. Both lights. Uh, I was gonna say Sky Dancer. <laughs> both the Light Surfer and also Light Monkey King in. So let's see what they're actually. They do get. Well, they get counters on both of them. Kinky's always going to counter regardless. 45% chance for uh, Vertiheal to counter, though. 45% chance for Vertiheal to counter, yet he always counters. Every single... Oh, he didn't counter that time. Okay, so maybe he doesn't always counter. It would be hilarious if he violent procked after that. <laughs> pretty typical RT. So actually, Royd is doing pretty decently in that situation. And I really like Royd in with the double immunity kind of thing. Double immunity and two bruisers that have kind of passive bruisers. I like Dragon Knights with Royd. Um, and then Riley makes sense with Royd as well as uh, any other real immunity cleanser healer kind of uh, kind of thing, depending on the team that you're going up against. But the, the typical double cleanser healer support unit and then uh, three bruisers so that you always have some kind of healer support thing and then at least two bruisers in the match no matter what gets banned out. So that's kind of the, the picks for the Royd team. Contrast is like a 20 star special league. Be strategic with your picks. People are like, I'm just gonna keep picking LD5s. <laughs> strategic, sure. Of course I'm gonna do that. Just pick a Lulu, pick a Royd, and then pick a whole bunch of That's why they have values. They're just picking a two star, a three star, and then the rest are just Nat Fives. Although, I mean this is a very this matchup, not really a fair matchup. One of these players is Obviously, not even the, the LDs aside, one of these players is just a stronger player because you could see that in the, the draft phase, right? The LD, well, first off, you could see that in the draft phase, you could also see it on the, the wings and everything. It's the first day, of course, you know, people are going to be all different sorts of skill levels matched up against each other. That's what happens the first day of RTA uh, of any season, anyway, the first week, really, of RTA. After that, it's kind of like you're matched up a little bit more with people at your skill level. I say a little, I stress a little bit more. I'm not saying completely, I'm just saying a little bit more. Um, 
versus like the first day where it's like everyone's mashed up together and they're all climbing at the same uh, at the same time. So, uh, but one of these things, like you could see the player on the right hand side uh, just didn't pick as well as the player on the, the, the left hand side. Just, I mean, LDs aside, it, we're, we're not even talking about LDs anymore. We're just talking about the the actual picks, the value, the the the, the order they, that they picked things in. I do actually like the Bernard though. I like Bernard. Bernard, I think, has a lot of value for a three star. He does damage based on speed. He does turn cycling as a defense break, his attack power break. Bernard, he's got pretty decent base stats for a three star. I actually really like Bernard. Man, you want to talk about how amazing Bernard? I'm just saying. But here's another match where we see two and three stars being picked because two three two, uh, two and three adds up to five this leaves the rest of your picks to be available for nat five so you just pick a two you pick a three roid happens to be a two so of course he's got a lot of value just being a two star that is actually a pretty decent bruiser two star first pick water griffin which is something you don't see every day <laughs> to uh so it looks like they're going for a fast aggressive cleave team opponent starts to pick some bruisers they only have one uh cleanse heal immunity unit the rest of them are all just bruisers so they banned out the water griffin they i felt like they didn't need to ban out though i would have banned out the riley that's just my personal preference i also wouldn't have first picked the water griffin that's another one of my personal preferences so gets two debuffs on there not enough well, I mean, it wasn't going to turn cycle uh, fully anyway, right? Because he turns the Water Griffin turn cycle is based on the amount of debuffs on the enemy. So he does uh, some debuffs with uh, with skill two and then turn cycles, and then does damage based on the enemy debuffs with skill three. So I wanted to show you guys the Kai in here, though. That's what we're looking at. That's the that's the exciting thing. I felt like that. I felt like the Riley was the ban. I'm not sure they had enough to deal with the with the Water Lich. I'm not sure why they banned the Water Lich instead of the Riley. I feel like this would have gone completely differently, even with the Griffin first pick. I feel like it would have gone completely differently if they banned the Riley. We are about to see the most insane match of the entire video right now. Not only do we have three LD5s on the battlefield, it's already looking very dangerous, but we also have two Second Awakened units on each side, uh, brand new Second Awakened Linda the Light Mystic Witch, and then two new Second Awakened Vagabonds over here. Anything where they can actually bring through three LD5s is already looking very aggressively in favor of whoever is bringing all of those in. So Jubel winds up actually doing what he was supposed to do, is cutting in, but everything else had immunity, so he couldn't really start provoking a whole bunch of stuff, right? So we didn't get to, uh, he didn't get to kind of interrupt the combo there. Riley couldn't do too much. Riley can only do, she can't cleanse and heal everything she can only cleanse a little bit. So she really did not. There was too many. There were so many debuffs. This team is so toxic that they brought in. The Vagabonds really didn't stand too much of a chance. They banned out the Juno. The Juno would have been pretty deadly. But Juno, they I feel like they still could have handled the Juno. Um, the Fire Bear has... The, the Linda has Attack Age Absorb. Attack Age of Zor with his skill too. And then also, you got the additional damage from uh, Gianna. And then you also have the extra damage that that Fire Bear does with his skill 1. That could have definitely taken care of the G. It doesn't really matter. They could have banned whatever they wanted to do. They still would have won. They had a crazy, ridiculous team. So here's something we don't get to see every day. I mean, that's kind of the point of these videos, though, is to see things that we don't see every day. But uh, I was looking for Jubel matches. This one has the Dark Second Awakened Dark Mystic Witch Gina, as well as the Light... I mean, sorry, Gina, the Second Awakened Dark Mystic Witch, as well as the Light Cannon Girl. So what you just saw there from the Light Cannon Girl was, just as a refresher, uh, is the Absorb Attack Age, single target Absorb Attack Age, followed by an AoE Stun. Dark Mystic Witch does an uh, AoE Strip, uh, followed by a Block Beneficial Effects, and then she also has, which is that one right there, uh, and then she also has the Skill 3, which is the Continuous Damage, and the sleep. The light cannon girl just used that AoE that she just used. It was the same as like the water cannon girl. If you guys are familiar with that one, it's just a multi-hit uh, defense breaks AoE situation. So at this point, I think that they're just out of juice. I don't know what they're going to do when they get to the... That's a vampire thing. Uh, I was going to say thing again. Vampire mole long. Actually, maybe they're not out of juice because the... No, that's going to die. Yeah. If that didn't die, if they got a little bit more CCs, if they got the strips on the... Uh, the strips on the... Did they have a situation where they missed the strip on the Abelio? I think they may have. But uh, Bruiser's just very strong. And then you you take the uh, you take the Jubel against the... Especially on Revenge against the Vertiheel. Vertiheel may or may not crit. And then you got the two water units there. Vertiheel can't really do too much in a situation like that. 
First couple picks, two stars, three stars, just to get the LD fives into the match. So, and then uh, we got two, we got two new second awakened vagabonds though. So we got the LD fives, check. <laughs> we got the second awakened vagabonds, also check. So if you take a look at the the match on the, um, well actually the match on the the left hand side, the, the closest to us, they got the three bruisers and then they got the one uh, the one support unit. Well, they they banned out one of the support units. They banned out the Fran, weirdly enough. Um, and then the the other side, you have the the Lulu, the Iliana, and then the multiple bruisers on that side as well. So both of them were using that that fairly standard, uh, fairly standard situation of the multiple bruisers and then the multiple support uh, healer cleanse immunity things. Dadjubel is going to go down fairly quickly though. He just got no HP left. Kind of curious if Roy's gonna do some crazy nonsense. It looks like Roy might do some crazy nonsense. I, Roy, Roy doesn't really have to do too much crazy nonsense. He gets some provokes, uh, some attack age decreases, some attack power breaks on that uh, on that rag. No, never mind. The match is over. I wanted to see some crazy stuff, but uh, either way, GG Royd. How to answer the age-old question, can a double second awakened Vagabond team counter an aggressive Lucian Cleave? So they ban out the Light Chun Li. That's not the unit that I thought they were going to ban out on either side. So let's see. They left the attack power buffer in. They left the attack power buffer. They left the AoE ignore defense. I'm surprised that they let the attack power buffer in. I, that's the one I would have banned at. However, Jubel still has a little bit over 50% HP between his passive and the Lucian... Uh, that no, Lucian passive? Bangle, you want to try that again? <laughs> between Jubel's passive and Darian's passive, he still had a little bit over 50% HP. So let's see if they actually can survive. So here's one of the things, though. If I, if I knew I was bringing these units in to counter cleaves, like a Lucian cleave or other cleaves, I would have put some shield runes on there. That's what I would have done. I would have had at least at least a set of shield runes. So I also would have banned out the uh, banned out the uh, the Wally Young because I feel like that would that would have just that would have mitigated a lot of damage. And then you don't have the sustain if you ban out the Wally Young. That's just my thoughts on it, though. Also, the Light Chun Li she does damage based on her speed, so she benefits from having attack power buff. And also, so Jubel is off the he's off the field. So at this point, is just trying to make sure that you get enough damage from the Wally Young and oh, counter the Wally Young and the Cocky. Um, I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, the the light <laughs> the light Chun Li. So she benefits from attack power buff. She benefits from uh, speed buff as well. So she does a lot of damage when you use something like Kali to buff her or Hraze buff to buff her. So actually, they took down the that was a five star. I don't think that was actually six star. That Kabila. That's why you six star your Kabilas and then put more damage on them. Additional damage artifacts on Kabila is not bad for uh, for uh, skill two because it's got multi hits on there as well. But looks like that didn't. I feel like that actually would have been able to, if they tweaked a little bit differently, if they picked band a little bit differently. I would have banned out the Wall Young personally. I would put shield runes on there personally. I think they actually could have won that with that same uh, with that same comp. Next match, very interesting. Double Second Awakened Vagabonds versus Second Awakened Water Mystic Witch Megan. So let's see, <laughs> as I always say, let's see what winds up happening. No will runes, doesn't matter, resists anyway. GG. RNG at its Actually, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I was going to say RNG at its finest. However, they do wind up provoking Lucian, so no amputation magic. And then, well, Lucian didn't get his attack power break off. However, that Megan, though, Megan resisting was huge. You gotta put will runes on that team. Vega, do you have will runes on all your monsters? I'm not saying I have will runes on everything. I'm just saying, like, that would... There was so much that could have gone either way here. No will runes on the Megan. Didn't matter. She resisted anyway. Lucian got provoked because Jubel cut in. So we did actually get to see a benefit from having the second Awakened Jubel, and then we also did get to see RNG at its finest of Jubel proccing his passive, and then also uh, Megan, um, Megan just resisting the attack age pushback. So GG on that could have gone very differently. This next one is just Royd. However, I thought this was interesting considering this is the rank 15 player on the left hand side, the rank five player on the right hand side, the rank 15 player actually looking like a fairly free-to-play friendly uh, team over there. So, I was very curious. I don't know if Royd's going to have a great showing here, considering there's three fire units. He's a wind unit. 
There's three fire units on the other side. I'm not entirely sure. They didn't get any CCs. They didn't get any CCs, and he also got the provo Well, it's irresistible, isn't it? So they got the provoke on that. The uh, and then the defense break wind up just killing. That would have been very different if he did not get the. Um, if he got some CCs uh, with the with the Antares. I mean, typical summoners. Where if RNG went the other way around, this would have been a different match. So, let's see if these fire units, because I'm pretty sure the uh, the Ashir is going to go bye-bye in a second. With all of the turns Oliver is going to take. So, I expect the Ashir to be dead in about five seconds. And then we'll see if, we'll see if the fire Ryu is going to be able to handle, I don't know if he's going to be able to handle those two water units. I think the water werewolf is going to be the most dangerous unit for him. More so than anything else. Did not get a revenge. Gets the revenge there. Oh, okay. That's the one. I feel like RNG going the other way around, this would have been a very different match. I think that the Water Werewolf is is just going to counter him at this point. Oh, maybe not. Well, it is multi-hits, though, which I've experienced this myself. The Water Werewolf, I'm like, oh, the Water Werewolf is going to be fine. He's going to multi-hit defense break, and then we're going to be good. And then he's like, nope, it's multi-hits, and uh, it's not going to work. So he's going to he's gonna wind up cleansing it off from one of those hits, right? So at this point, again, multi-hits. So, you know what? Maybe it's just a four-on-one. We're just going to see a water, uh, water Ryu. We're going to see a fire Ryu solo now. Do we see a fire Ryu solo? I'm very, I'm very curious. This is, maybe this guy needs a nerf. I'm just saying. We need, we need the fire Ryu in the meta. Okay, so now it's two waters versus fire Ryu. This, he, sh he shouldn't be soloing this. He shouldn't be soloing this. Is this what we see? Is this the end of the... Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay, so the Water Werewolf, I said in the beginning, and then I doubted myself, but I said in the very beginning, I was like, the Water Werewolf should be able to handle this uh, fairly, fairly well. So anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Those are some of the new Second Awakened Vagabonds in RTA. Doing fairly well considering it's 20-star RTA. We'll see if they really make it into uh, the rest of the season at the amount that they're getting picked right now. But anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll do Mystic Witches next. See you as always in the next one.